next type of reaction is oxidation and reduction reaction that is we also say as redox reaction the earlier concept of oxidation and reduction is based on the addition or removal of oxygen or hydrogen elements so in terms of oxygen or hydrogen oxidation and reduction reactions can be defined as oxidation that is the addition of oxygen to a substance is called oxidation other way, other way around the removal of hydrogen from a substance is called oxidation Redu what about reaction reduction so the addition of hydrogen to a substance is called reduction other way around the removal of oxygen from a substance is called reduction it is obvious from the above definition that the process of reduction is just the opposite of oxidation isn't it moreover oxidation and reduction occur together we will now define the oxidation oxidizing agents and reducing agents so what are oxidizing agents the substance which gives oxygen for oxidation is called an oxidizing agent it is not that difficult to understand other way around the substance which removes hydrogen is called an oxidizing agent now what about reducing agent the substance which gives hydrogen for reduction is called a reducing agent the substance which removes oxygen the other way around i am talking the substance which removes oxygen is called is also called a reducing agent the oxidation note that the oxidation and reduction reactions are called redox reactions okay now example when copper oxide is heated with hydrogen the copper metal and water are formed now note the description which i am trying to convey in this reaction copper oxide is changing into copper this is that is oxygen is being removed from copper oxide now by definition removal of oxygen from a substance is called reduction so we say that copper oxide is been is being reduced to copper in this and the, in the same reaction hydrogen is changing into h2o water this is oxygen is been added to hydrogen now by definition addition of oxygen to a substance is called oxidation so we can say that hydrogen has been oxidized to water so we find that hydrogen has been oxidized to water and at the same time copper oxide has been reduced to water this shows that oxidation and reduction occur together hence we called such type of reaction as oxidation uh, redox reaction successive oxidation reduction in a same reaction please note that the substance which gets oxidized in this reaction h2 is a reducing agent on the other hand the substance substance which gets reduced that is copper oxide is the oxidizing agent another point to be noted is that re reaction between copper oxide and hydrogen to form copper and water is an oxidation reduction reaction which is also a displacement reaction next example when hydrogen sulfide reacts with chlorine then sulfur and hydrogen chloride are formed in this reaction h2s that is, that, that is hydrogen sulfide is changing into sulfur that is hydrogen is been removed from hydrogen sulfide now by definition the removal of hydrogen from a compound is called oxidation so we say that hydrogen sulfide is been oxidized to sulfur in the same reaction chlorine is changing into hcl this is hydrogen is been added to chlorine now by definition the addition of hydrogen to a substance is called reduction so we can say that chlorine is been reduced to hydrogen chloride so in the above reaction chlorine is removing the hydrogen from hydrogen sulfide therefore chlorine is an oxidizing agent on the other hand hydrogen sulfide is supplying hydrogen to chlorine for reduction so hydrogen sulfide is a reducing agent thus a very important conclusion to be remembered that the oxidation and reduction reactions is that the substance which gets oxidized is the reducing agent and the substance which gets reduced is the oxidizing agent remember this
नेक्स्ट एग्जाम्पल वेन जिंक ऑक्साइड इज हीटेड विथ कार्बन देन जिंक मेटल एंड कार्बन मोनोऑक्साइड आर फॉर्म In this reaction, zinc oxide is losing losing oxygen, so it is being reduced to zinc. On the other hand, carbon is gaining oxygen, so it is being oxidized to carbon monoxide. In this reaction, zinc oxide is the oxidizing agent, whereas carbon is the reducing agent. This reaction is used in the production of zinc metal in industry. Carbon is used in the form of coke. for the extraction of zinc metal coke coke means a very fine partic carbon particles like graphite particles okay so next example when manganese dioxide reacts with hydrochloric acid then manganese dichloride chlorine and water are formed in this reaction MnO2 which is manganese dioxide is losing oxygen to form manganese manganese dichloride so manganese manganese dioxide is been reduced to manganese dichloride on the other hand HCl is losing hydrogen to form chlorine so hydrochloric acid HCl is been oxidized to chlorine in this reaction manganese dioxide is the oxidizing agent whereas hydrochloric acid is the reducing agent now the very important thing i am going to tell is so far we have studied oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen and hydrogen there is another concept of oxidation and reduction in terms of metals and non metals this is as follows the addition of non metallic element or removal of metallic element is called oxidation whereas the addition of metallic element or removal of non metallic element is called reduction this concept of oxidation and reduction will help us in understanding the following oxidation reduction reaction please note that copper oxide co is also known as copper 2 oxide because the valency of copper in it is 2 next example next example when copper is heated in air it reacts with oxygen of air to form black compound copper oxide in this reaction copper is changing into copper oxide this is the addition of oxygen but addition of oxygen is called oxidation so copper is oxidized to copper oxide now o2 oxygen is changing into co this is addition of copper which is metal so by addition of metal but addition of metal is called reduction so in this reaction oxygen is reduced to copper oxide here oxygen is a oxidizing agent whereas copper is reducing agent another example is if hydrogen gas is passed over heated copper oxide then the black copper oxide is reduced and red brown copper metal is obtained so in this reaction copper oxide is reduced to copper metal whereas hydrogen is oxidized to water The oxidation of magnesium is similar to the oxidation of copper. Now we'll go through our next part that is effects of oxidation reaction in everyday life. Oxidation has damaging effect on metals as well as on food. The damaging effect of oxidation on metal is studied as corrosion and that on food is studied as rancidity. thus there are two common effects of oxidation reaction which we observe in day to day life these are corrosion of metals and rancidity of food so let us discuss corrosion corrosion is a process in which metals are eaten up gradually by the action of air moisture or a chemical such as acids on their surface corrosion is mainly caused by the oxidation of metal 
by the oxygen of air rusting of iron metal is the most common form of corrosion when an iron object is left in damp air for a considerable time it gets covered with a red brown flaky substance called rust this is called rusting of iron so during the corrosion of iron that is the rusting of iron iron metal is oxidized by the oxygen of air in the presence of water or moisture to form hydrated iron hydrated iron 3 oxide called rust the rusting of iron is a redox reaction rusting involves unwanted oxidation of iron metal which occurs in nature on its own rust is a soft and porous substance which gradually falls off from the surface of an iron object and then the iron below starts rusting thus rusting of iron or corrosion of iron is a continuous process which if not prevented in time eats up the whole iron object corrosion weakens the iron and steel objects and structures such as railings car bodies bridges and ships etc and cuts short their life a lot of money has to be spent every year to prevent the corrosion of iron and steel objects and to replace the damaged iron and steel structures we will study the corrosion of metal and the method of its prevention in detail in the next in the upcoming chapters now let us understand what what is rancidity when the food material prepared in fats and oils are kept for a long time they start giving unpleasant smell and taste the fat and oil containing food materials which give unpleasant smell and taste are said to have become rancid which is sour or stale so this happens as follows when the fats and oil present in food material get oxidized by the oxygen their oxidation products have unpleasant smell and taste due to this the smell and taste of food materials containing fats and oils change and becomes very unpleasant the condition produced by aerial oxidation of fats and oils in foods marked by unpleasant smell and taste is called rancidity rancidity spoils the food materials prepared in fats and oils which have been kept for a considerable time and makes them unfit for eating the characteristics of rancid food are that it gives a unpleasant smell and also has a unpleasant the development of rancidity of food can be prevented or retarded in the following ways retarded means slow down first first rancidity can be Rancidity can be prevented by adding antioxidants to foods containing fats and oils. Antioxidant is a substance which prevents oxidation. Antioxidants are actually reducing agents. When antioxidants are added to foods, then the fats and oil present in them do not get oxidized easily and do not turn rancid. So the food remains good to eat for much longer time. The two common antioxidants used in food to prevent oxidation uh, uh, to prevent the development of rancidity are butylated hydroxy anisole and butylated hydroxy toluene rancidity can be prevented by packaging fat and oil containing foods in nitrogen gas so when the packed food is surrounded by an unreactive gas nitrogen there is no oxygen to cause its oxidation and make it rancid The manufacturers of potato chips fill the plastic bags containing chips with nitrogen gas to prevent the chips from being oxidized and turn rancid. Third point, rancidity can be retarded or can be slowed down by keeping food in a refrigerator. Refrigerator has a low temperature inside it. When the food is kept in refrigerator, the oxidation of fats and oil in it is slowed down due to low temperature. so the development of rancidity due to oxidation is retarded rancidity can be retarded by storing food in air tight containers so when food is stored in air tight containers then there is little exposure to oxygen of air 
Due to reduced exposure to oxygen, the oxidation of fats and oils present in food is slowed down and hence the development of rancidity is retarded. Rancidity can be retarded by storing foods away from light. In the absence of light, the oxidation of fats and oils present in food is slowed down and hence the development of rancidity is retarded. Thank you.